Hi everyone and welcome to this video series on the fundamentals of research. In this series we'll be going over concepts versus variables, the relationships between variables, and theories and hypotheses. This is part two where we'll be going over the different types of variables, which is part of the blue cube there in terms of variables. Now, before we get started, let's just quickly review what was in the first video. In that video, we learned that a variable is the measurable aspect of a concept that can take on different values. For example, if we have a concept like alcohol abuse, one way we can measure it via a variable is perhaps by asking uh, on a survey, in the past week, on the days that you drank alcohol, how many drinks did you have? And then if we have certain response options that they must choose from, like number one means that they only drank one drink, number two means they drank two to three, number three means four to five, etc., then those numbers that are circled there are the values of my alcohol abuse variable. There are two main types of variables in research what we call the independent variable and the dependent variable. So the independent variable you'll see is um, shortened usually to either IV or sometimes X. And this variable is what we consider the causal factor. It's the one that is producing or leading to some changes. Whereas the dependent variable, which is um, abbreviated as DV or Y, is the one that is the outcome or the result or the effect. It's the outcome that depends on the independent variable. So because it depends uh, on this other variable, then that's why it's called the dependent variable. Whereas the independent variable is sort of you know, footloose and fancy free. <laughs> it's doing its own thing. But when it's doing its own thing, it's causing or leading to some change in the dependent variable. So let's use an example to illustrate the difference. Let's say we want to understand whether children who witness violence in the home are more likely to engage in violent behavior themselves. In this case, we have two variables. Now, which one is the one that is leading to the outcome or result? In other words, which is the independent variable? Well, it's right here. It's the, chill, it's the um, sorry, <laughs> it's the witnessing of, of violence in the home. So witnessing violence in the home is the independent variable because some children witness violence and others don't. And then in terms of the outcome or the result, otherwise known as the dependent variable, then that's the violent behavior right here. So engaging in violent behavior because some children engage in violent behavior and others don't. And we want to know whether or not a child engages in violent behaviors depends on whether or not that child witnessed domestic violence in the home. One way to identify whether something is an independent or uh, dependent variable involves time. And this has to do with the fact that an independent variable always comes first in time because it is the one doing the effecting on the DV. So if we imagine this is time and it's moving forward as time tends to do. <laughs> Um, but uh, so if we have this as the past and then this is the present and with the example of the children witnessing violence, if we have uh, people's ages here, then the abuse in childhood, which is the independent variable, had to come first before the dependent variable, substance abuse as a teen. It doesn't make sense for substance abuse as a teen causing abuse in childhood, right? The abuse had to happen first. And it doesn't really matter when we do the interviews or surveys or what have you. It could be when they're teenagers in this case or adults. The abuse had to come first. 
in order to have an effect on the substance abuse. Now, you may be asking yourself, why do we have two types of variables? Why can't things be simple in life? Um, I ask myself that a lot, but in, not about this, but in general. Anyways, so because in research, we want to know what the relationship is, if any, between those two variables. And that is the purpose of research in terms of trying to understand why something is happening. If something is happening, then something else is making that something happen. And in this case, when I talk about relationship, I'm not talking about this kind of relationship. Um, it's asking questions like, is there a relationship between being abused as a child and engaging in substance abuse as a teenager? So in that example before, what we were getting at is whether or not that relationship exists between those two variables. Okay, and, and that's it. <laughs> that's all I have to say about the main types of variables. And that's the end of part two. Make sure you check out part three where I'll be going over the types of relationships that can exist between variables. And just as a spoiler, just like regular relationships in, in, you know, between people, they can have their ups and downs and they can stay flat. It's all very interesting. So make sure you uh, check that out when I post it. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.